HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Fletcher Tilton Attorneys at Law, serving Central Massachusetts and beyond with responsive solutions. Integrity, leadership, and excellence, Fletcher Tilton. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Compass at Hopkinton, offering innovative programming that treats the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease in a caring, secure residential setting. More at compasshopkinton.com. Welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the anchor desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On today's newscast, Chuck Joseph gave HCAM News a look at the renovations of the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Elmwood swore in members of the We Deliver program. Hopkinton High School Resource Officer Phil Powers shows off his new uniform. But first, we start with the Board of Selectmen as Police Chief Edward Lee stood before the selectmen to seek approval to promote Detective Tim Brennan to sergeant. Uh, outstanding candidate. Chief Edward Lee talked to the selectmen about the selection process and choosing a new sergeant. It was a tough decision for the chief as nine Hopkinton officers applied, but in the end it was Detective Timothy Brennan who received the promotion to sergeant. Um, but in the end, uh, in my opinion, I believe that uh, Detective Brennan rose to the top during the process. Uh, he brought a, a unique set of skills uh, coupled with his uh, education and uh, experience. And uh, in my uh, opinion, uh, would be pe the best fit for the position. Uh, he's 48 years old. He's married to his wife, Kim. He has three children, uh, Jack, 13, Ryan, 10, and Sarah, 7. He has lived in town for 15 years but was born in New uh, Newton, Massachusetts and graduated from uh, Newton North High School in 1984. He has earned a bachelor's degree in science and business management from Bentley College in 1994 and a master's degree in criminal justice, a master's of science in criminal justice from Suffolk University in 2003. He has over 27 years of law enforcement experience. He had 15 years at Bentley College as a, where he served as a dispatcher, patrol officer, a sergeant, and a lieutenant. His last three years in Bentley was that of an operations lieutenant. He has served Hopkins uh, PD with outstanding uh, exemplary performance for the last 12 years. My biggest goal is just going to try to get comfortable with the midnight shift, um, get comfortable with the and acclimated going back to midnights. It's uh, it's a, it's quite a um, it's quite a change when you go back from you know sleeping regular hours to going back to sleep in the hard hours. But I'm looking forward to it. Um, beyond that, one important goal that I started to work on with. Um, uh, Bruce, um, the new the new coordinator, he's not new, he's been on about four years now. He's the wellness coordinator for the district. Um, Bruce and I are going to work on trying to incorporate the Rad Kids program into the wellness curriculum, probably at the grade three level. Um, the chief has bought into it. Dr. McLeod has given her uh, overall stamp of approval. It's just a matter of kind of winding through how we're going to pay for it and it's going to be a program that I hope to be that's going to be um, the police department and the schools doing it together um, to prevent to present the rad kids class at one grade level to start out with and then hopefully down the road we'll try to do it at two grade levels um, so that's my 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 initial goal the one thing I want to kind of hang on to because it's it started to pick up some momentum when Chief Lee came on board and when Dr. McLeod came on board um, and I presented it to both of them and they were thrilled so we've been doing the, the women's rad class, as he told you today. I got beat up pretty good today by about 35 women. Um, and it's a good class. It really, it really brings in the crime prevention and the physical skills all together in a nice package. And when I was up at the high school's the SRO, I um, was able to get two of the wellness instructors certified up there. So really all I have to do is go up there and do the simulation for them now. Bruce is going to get certified for that. So we're going to continue and expand on the females program try to bring the kids program along a little bit further and get that incorporated into the um, third grade wellness curriculum. So well, right now that's the initial stuff. I also like to say uh, thank you to the other officers that are here to support you and, and also recognize the candidates. Um, I, think the, the, I think the entire board is pleased with the feedback that we've gotten from the chief on, on the quality of the candidates. And um, good candidates help make it a good process. 
Thank you. Great. Really happy to hear you talking about, you know, bringing more of an integration in with the schools and and developing programs in that uh, in, in of that type. Uh, you know, I think that everybody on the board uh, thinks that it's really important for you know the police to be involved in the community and for people to uh, you know see see you as the partners that you are and and you know not just uh, you know the people out there giving tickets and uh, and whatnot and and the kids are really the foundation here and uh, having them grow up to to trust uh, you know our our uh, our figures who are who are uh, uh, our authority figures and uh, realize that you're there to help. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That's unanimous. Congratulations. Congratulations Thank Tim. you very much. Congratulations, Sergeant Brennan. The Board of Selectmen also approved Town Manager Norman Kamalu's appointment of Maria Casey to serve as the new Town Human Resources Director. Everybody we spoke to confirmed here as being ethical, trustworthy, and highly professional. The Board of Selectmen affirmed the town manager's appointment of Maria Casey as the town's new human resources director. Mr. Kumalu praised Maria as he told the board why Maria was selected for the position. And possesses emotional intelligence like no other. This is one of what comments that we received from um, one of her references. Then members of the board had an opportunity to ask Maria questions. Thank you for, um, for coming to join us. Can you tell me what it is about Hopkinton that um, interested you? There, there were a number of things. <clears throat> Among my uh, professional colleagues, in particular the Massachusetts Municipal Personnel Association, Hopkinton is a community not only the community, you know, and its citizens, but a lot of your uh, managers are well respected. So given, um, given that at, at first blush, uh, you know, that intrigued me to continue further. And then as I, you know, was selected for an interview, continued to look into, look into Hopkinton more, came here, you know, went to some of the establishments, talked to folks, and um, it reminds me of the community I grew up in. Uh, I was born and bred in Littleton, Mass, mm -hmm. and um, reminded me a lot of Groton, which I worked to, with previously to uh, my tenure in Concord, with the change in uh, form of government and what comes with that. Uh, so with all of that, that's what attracted me to apply. And the duties as well. I'm glad you did. You know, one thing that I would just like to note, in case uh, people are looking through the packet, uh, Maria did at one point work in Westford. Uh, and Mr. Kamalo and Maria did not know each other at the time. Um, I'm not sure if your times overlapped at all or not uh, while you were in Westford, but slightly, slightly, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, that question, you know, is bound to come up, and not that it should be neither either here nor there, in yeah. my opinion, but. Um, uh, just to bring that out so that people aren't trying to speculate in that regard. So uh, with that, though, uh, I'll entertain a motion to um, that the board appoint uh, Maria Casey as the HR director. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. Great. Welcome aboard. <clears throat> Welcome Officially. to Hawkinton. Look forward to working with you. Welcome to Hopkinton, Maria. If you drive by Hopkinton High School, you may notice quite a bit of construction happening at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Chuck Joseph of the HCA showed HCAM News the progress of the many renovations. Hi, I'm Chuck Joseph, and on behalf of HCAM, I'm glad to welcome you to the uh, Hopkinton Center for the Arts in progress as we speak here. We're on the uh, Hopkins Road side of the building, and many of you know the, the barn which is being converted into uh, a learning center with studios, arts, art studios, dance studios, music studios, etc. 
But now we're at a point where we're adding on to that the main gallery, the central gallery, which goes out into the high school parking lot, as well as into the parking lot for the Hopkins Center for the Arts. And of course, the Performance Center, which is next door, uh, which is really going to be a highlight. And many of the community will be uh, making use of that, I'm sure, over the years. So we're glad to be here. And uh, with that, we're going to kind of venture on into the gallery space and then over into the performance space. All right, so we're now in the main gallery section of the new Center for the Arts, and this is a flow-through or walk-through section with access to the high school parking lot on one side and the Hopkins Center for the Arts parking lot on the other. Contained in here will be enough space for actual art exhibits as well along the walls. The wall is going to be high with a cathedral ceiling, ticket booth, catering kitchen, control room, restrooms for the whole center, admin offices, etc. This is where most people are going to be entering into um, the Hopkins Center for the Arts and then going into either the school for various uh, classes or the Performance Center. And we'll head in there next. All right, so we're now in the Performance Center and this is really where a lot of the public is going to experience the Center for the Arts for lecture series, for music concerts, for theatrical performances, um, and for various functions as well. It's designed with 16 foot high walls and we have these phenomenal trusses that were built from lumber from Oregon that was shipped to Vermont where they milled the trusses, disassembled them, brought them here and we craned them up this past week and they were up here waiting for the roof panels which will be coming on later in the week. This is where I think the community will identify the Hopkins Center for the Arts because of the various functions that will be here. And we're very excited about what this brings to the community potentially in terms of concerts, theater, and lectures. So we're backstage now behind the Performance Center where all the performers would be during a show before they come out and afterwards. Uh, it's also a set shop where theatrical sets can be constructed and then used during performances here. Um, and there's also a garage door at the end so that if there's a big function in here it can be catered through this area as well. It's kind of a multi-purpose uh, part to the, but a, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that are really necessary in order to make the whole place work properly. We're really excited about it. So from here we'll go into the barn and show you where all the classes are going to be held. So we're now in the uh, final section that we'll be showing you today, which is the interior of the barn, which is going to become the learning center. It's a little bit of a mess right now, but we're on our way to bringing it to fruition. There'll be visual arts classrooms for oil painting, watercolors, etc. There'll be a dance studio, three uh, music studio rehearsal rooms, uh, one for small group, two for individuals, and then a large area upstairs, which we'll just go to last to give you a sense of what that's all about. All right, so this is our last section up here, which is the second floor of the barn, which currently we're leaving as one large open space. It's perfect for small acoustical shows, poetry readings, uh, various large classes, choral groups, and we're really going to look forward to see how this is going to be used. Um, it does have the capability in the future to be subdivided, should that be needed, um, based upon the programming of the Center for the Arts. So that's it for now. Um, on behalf of the HCA and HCE, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to go to the website for the Hopkins Center for the Arts and consider contributing to get us to the finish line. This is a um, really unique public-private co-venture where the community benefits and your taxes are not raised. This is all being done with donations from your neighbors and we encourage you to do the same to get us to the finish line. So thanks very much. I am looking forward to seeing the finished product. HCAM is currently looking for photos from around the community to display on our homepage. If you have a cool photo of something Hopkinton related, please email me, news at hcam.tv. Currently, if you email in a photo we can use, we will give you a limited edition HCAM 10th anniversary 24 ounce service tumbler, perfect for coffee. Still a lot more to come on HCAM news, including a look at Officer Phil's new uniform, Elmwood's We Deliver program swears in their newest students, and Courtney has our HCAM Insider. We are back in a flash on HCAM News. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here, and we have Greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org, and our phone number is 508 435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a 
Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton High School Resources Officer Phil Powers has a new uniform, and there is a very good reason behind it. Officer Phil was kind enough to tell HCAM News all about it. Hopkinton High School Resource Officer Phil Powers, or as some of the students call him OP, short for Officer Phil, wanted a change from the standard police uniform to a more casual uniform to have a more casual approach towards the students and the public. Chief Lee agreed with the idea and allowed the uniform change. I approached the chief, Chief Lee, who is new to the Hopkinton Police Department. Uh, just about my uniform, instead of wearing a police uniform every day to school, you know, dealing with the, the kids, the children, younger kids, I asked them if, uh, you know, if I could make it a little more softer, make it more approachable and more kid-friendly, and uh, he agreed. And uh, we came up with some different shirts. Um, this is my long sleeve shirt that I, we wear for the winter time. Um, I have different color shirts for different days. Uh, uh, this green represents the hill of green colors. Um, I, I also have blue, represent the police. And on Fridays I wear, I usually wear red, and that's support the troop day. Each shirt has my badge on it, and it has who I am and uh, my job title. And on the back I also still have police, so I still am identifiable you know, to the, the students and to the, the kids uh, and the parents at the school. Have you noticed uh, any difference in the way people approach you? Not as they approach me, but um, I've gotten a, a great response from the kids at the school that they, they like the uniform. And, you, know, and if, you know, it's easier for them to approach me, I feel, not having that, you know, intimidation of that police uniform. So it's, it's kid-friendly, uh, softer and gentler, and, and I believe that's how a school resource officer should be to, for the kids and for the parents and for the staff at the schools. Officer Powers can be seen wearing many various police shirts, including long sleeves for the cold weather and short sleeves for the warm weather, as well as a couple various colors. The new uniform definitely looks a little more relaxed and comfortable. The great tradition of the student-run post office at Elmwood School, otherwise known as We Deliver, continued this year, and the students in the 16th year of the program were sworn in. Around 60 students were sworn in to the Elmwood School We Deliver program by Hopkinton and Woodville Postmaster Carl A. Zagami. The program allows students to run their own post office. In the program, students create posters, design stamps, write letters, and learn the general operations of the post office. The program helps communication, writing, and teamwork skills. Principal David Youngberg talk to students and parents about the program. So we are in our 16th year, as I mentioned, and what we do here for the We Deliver program is students get to write letters to each other, students can write letters to their parents, they can get letters from their parents and from family members and trusted adults that we know, and there are three places in town that letters can be delivered. After a description of what the students will do, the four postmasters were sworn in, followed by the rest of the We Deliver participants. Okay. I say your names. I say your names. <laughs> I love when that happens. That's perfect. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution. And I will support and defend the Constitution. Of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. Faith, and allegiance to the same. Freely, I take this oath freely, without mental reservations, without mental reservations, for purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. Very good. Great job. You are official We Deliver 2014 15 members at Elwood School. So, congratulations. We're very, very proud of you. <laughs> Absolutely. Our, our We Deliver program is now in its 16th year, and it's open to uh, any students who wish to apply, second and third graders. We had almost 250 applicants this year, and the third graders in particular can uh, apply for the postmaster positions, which are um, 
in charge of all the other uh, students that have their jobs in the program. So out of those 250, we were able to select 60 students based on uh, teacher recommendations and input, and uh, we were able to invite them to be part of that program. And the postmasters, uh, those who were selected, who applied and wanted to become a postmaster, they uh, took a postmaster civil service exam. It was actually a, a real practice exam. Those who scored a perfect score then went on to the finalist round, which was to write an essay about what they felt made them um, the best candidate for the position. And uh, I understand over the years this program has grown and it's turned into a, a lot of students wanting to be a part of it. Um, and also, I, they're learning a lot of great skills in this program. Can you talk about some of the skills they're learning? Absolutely. Uh, letter, letter writing is uh, one of those skills that is very important. And even at this age, students are losing the craft of being able to have writing. So this is an authentic experience for them. It gives them a real reason and um, an authentic way to uh, communicate with their friends, with their family members, to their grandparents. And then the, uh, the joy that comes with receiving mail is also something that students don't very often experience. So getting them into that at an early age makes it really valuable. And it also helps with their writing. And part of our writing curriculum um, is writing about authentic experiences. So um, that really connects to what the kids are doing in the classroom. My main purpose today was to swear in the four new postmasters for the two sessions that they have at the We Deliver School. And then we swear in all the other helpers, the carriers, the Nixies, the sorters, so that everybody has a chance to, you know, speak of the oath and learn the appreciation of their jobs that they're going to have while working in the Elmwood Post Office. And can you explain for those that don't know what the duties of a postmaster are? The duties of a postmaster is a little bit of everything. Starting to make sure that when the mail comes in in the morning, it gets sorted properly to the routes. Make sure that in Hopkinton's instance, we have 11 routes, that all the mail gets delivered on a daily basis, as well as we manage the retail at the Hopkinton Post Office, which is open 8.30 to 5 for people's needs of sending packages out, letters, passport acceptance, um, and things like that. Uh, basically hoping that everybody gets back in the day safe and sound and goes home safe and sound. And this program, it seems to be great uh, for kids that develop a lot of their skills, uh, such as uh, writing and just general uh, work skills as well. Can you talk about uh, some of the skills this will help children develop? Number one, it's just keeping the letter writing process going. Uh, in this day and age, everything is done on email, but to see the kids you know, writing letters, getting written letters from grandparents, family members, sisters, brothers, teachers, um, it just keeps that you know, old tradition of the post office, which is well over 100 years old, it keeps it going for us. And I think there's nothing like getting that handwritten letter, whether it's neat, messy, it's just that handwritten letter. It's, it's personal, personalized you know, from a parent, and I think it's, it's just great for everybody to keep it going. We Deliver is certainly a great and beneficial tradition at Elmwood School. It is the Christmas season. And with the holidays, there is a lot of upcoming programming on HCAM. Here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, to tell you more with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. In Hopkinton Coffee Break, tonight at 8 p.m., the hosts share their recent exploits and favorite holiday traditions. I'd roll out just the gingerbread mix make just the squares, and, and it's not that tough, and make the old-fashioned icing, and each kid would make their own house. On Monday, December 8th, at 7 p.m., Diana Whitney recites poetry inspired by personal experiences in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I could see the brush stroke of each yellow line, could feel my tires crush pieces of gravel, and my ten toes alive inside my shoes, firm and quick on the pedals. At 8.30 p.m., learn more about how the food we eat affects our overall health and physician focus. As we age, uh, we don't absorb B12 uh, nearly as well. And the current recommendations say if you're over the age of 50, the majority of your B12 should come from the form that's in uh, dietary supplements or fortified food, such as breakfast cereals. In Poetic Lines at 9.30 p.m., Martha Collins shares the inspiration behind her poetry in her new book, Day Unto Day. 
I like the fact that seven lines do, is not even, it's odd. Mm -hmm. So you can't have little neat couplets. Um, and I liked the irresolution of seven lines mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. thinking about sonnets. For HCAM TV specials, we bring you story time with Superintendent Kathy McLeod on Tuesday, December 9th at 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday, December 10th at 11 a.m., hear community input in the ESBC Public Forum. At 12.15 p.m., learn about hydrangeas in Hydrangea Highlights. In a new Business Matters at 8.30 p.m., Katie Tavares shares her passions for and the challenges of working at Golden Pond. If you have three stools, that's residents and families. Okay. And then you have to also be responsible to your employees. Um, you have to provide um, fair and decent wage, time off schedules, um, job performance in a, in a place to work that people can feel um, engaged, empowered, and respected. On HCAM Ed, we'll have two musical specials for you with the HHS Drama Ensemble's presentation of Singing in the Rain and the Hopkins School Winter Concert. If you know someone who wants the HCAM Insider delivered to them every week, just have them send me an email at Courtney at hcam.tv. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook to stay up to date with everything Hopkington, including upcoming local holiday events. If you have a Hopkington-related video, photo, or story idea, Send it to me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and happy December. Stand.